Hello, my dear friends. Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. Coming back at you with floss to number 156. I have like no notes. I have one little note that I'll share with you later. Um, but other than that, it's just going to be kind of stream of consciousness. So we'll see where this goes. It's always fun though, right? Um, nod your head, boys and girls. <laughs> so... Wow, here we are. If you've watched my Needlework Expo recap, you know that I had a very good Needlework Expo. Um, I was very pleased. And all of that is because you reached out to your stores um, and let them know what you were interested in. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, so yeah, Needlework Expo is um, pretty much wrapped up. Moving on to what comes next, and I'll talk a little bit about that later but no sneak peeks this time. But in this video, I'm going to recap, um, or I'm going to go into depth on Palace of the Winds. Um, I haven't done a release video of that, so I'm just going to kind of do it here in the front of this floss tube video. And then I will talk about the other things I've been stitching on. I'm going to show you what my plans are, what I hope to touch for Sampler September and Sampler September Soiree. Um, have some giveaways. So yeah, let's get started. First, Palace of the Winds. A study in variegated thread. This is by far the most popular of the um, new designs that I put out with Carolyn's Balloons, a very close second. Those two, totally different in style, right? But um, those two were the most well-loved. Palace of the Winds, as you know, is based on a pillow that I saw at a furniture store. And I wanna talk just a little bit in depth, um, maybe not very deep, <laughs> but I wanna give you an idea of what you have to think about for this, um, floss amounts, what the DMC version would look like, a little look at that. Um, so you can make a decision about whether you think this is for you or not, if you haven't already pre-ordered it. Needless to say, a lot of the shops have pre-ordered it, and several of the shops also are getting the floss packs from Cottage Garden Threads. I should back up and say, I know of several that are getting the floss packs. There may be other ones that I'm just not aware of that, you know, they didn't mention it to me in the order because why would they? I closed the door for the video and now I have a kitty outside crying. Hold on, please. All right, but you can't take up the whole seat. She says, au contraire, mother. I'm not here. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> she's so spoiled. Oh, my goodness, she's so spoiled. I have to do my video. So you're just going to have to sit here quietly. <laughs> That's what she thinks of that. I need to get this back rest up from behind me. All right, so I do have a link in the pattern to a video that I did talking all about how to work with the variegated threads. Um, I also talk about the amounts and the DMC version. So a lot of what I'm saying here, um, I'm touching on it here, but I go in depth into it in the video. So it's really, it's an hour long. So there's a lot of contact there, content there and um, just really in depth on the different ways you can use variegated thread to get different looks and trying to inform you so that you can make an informed decision on how much work you want to put into it basically um would you rather not do all the work that it takes to get this look or would you rather um take the time and and kind of the the thought process that goes into working on the different motifs with the different threads, the different colors. So I go into that all in depth in the video. Um, floss amounts. So there are three colors of um, the Cottage Garden threads in this. So it is burgundy bark. That's the darkest color. Geranium is the middle color and 
Katie's blush is the lightest color. And this is the one that is used the least. When you're thinking about these colors, should you want to, um, I don't know whether I should keep a hold of this or not. I don't know how much I'm going to sh actually show you as I'm talking. Um, should you want to change the colors? Let me back up. I want to talk about the amounts first. I stitched this on 40 count linen over one. For my stitching, I'm a very frugal stitcher, stitcher. I used just under two skeins of the burgundy bark. This is what I have left on one skein of the geranium and what I have left on one skein of the Katie's Blush. And there's probably about half of this skein left. The thread packs the Cottage Garden Threads has put together is going to have three skeins of the darkest, the burgundy bark, two skeins of the geranium, and one skein of the Katie's Blush. And we determined that that should be enough whether you're working on 40 count or 36 count because it's a little more than what I used on 40 count. So, um... Actually, for some of it, it's quite a bit more than what I used on, 30, on 40 count. So you should be fine with one strand on 36 count as well. I talked, had a great conversation with Erica Heil. She is the owner of Black Cat Stitchery in Winthrop Harbor, Illinois. Um, and she mentioned that she has some 20 count. I don't know whether it's called Ada at 20 count. It is an Ada-like fabric that it has the squares. You know how hard anger is 22 count. This is 20 count. So it's not linen, but it is the equivalent of the 40 count that I used so that these thread packs, a single one of these thread packs should work. And again, if you want to use 18 count or 36 count, one of the thread packs should work. Um... If you want to use the lower counts of fabric, 32, 16, 28, 14, you're going to need two of the packs. So just be aware and just be aware that, you know, these are coming from Australia. So the shops do have to take an account, into account the cost of postage, postage when they price these. So these are not as cheap as your overdyed flosses that are produced here in the U.S. So there is going to be some outlay involved with these threads. Um, I believe it's totally worth it, but my budget is not your budget, so that is something to think about. Um, I do have the DMC conversion in the chart, and the DMC colors are 902 for the darkest, 223 for the medium, and 819 for the lightest. Now, um, you will not get the same look. I did stitch up, so it is this motif here. I did stitch that up in the DMC, so you can see there is quite a bit of a difference in what that motif looks like, and that gives you kind of a representation of what the entire piece is going to change, how it's going to change. If you decide to use DMC, versus the called for threads, the, the cottage garden threads. Now, um, if you would like to get this look, um, but can't afford the floss packs, an alternative might be to just get the DMC for the dark, which is the one that uses the most, um, and then use the floss for the cottage garden threads for the other two. That will give you kind of a a representation not not as much the dark one is the one that is used the most so it will change a lot if you use the DMC but it's not like it's not going to be pretty it's just going to be different than what you see here another thing that will cause this to change is if you want to try and use some of the over dyed threads that are produced here in the US classic color works weeks dye works gentle arts I have no problem with that. I encourage that. The thing you need to think about is um, there is a lot, the, the thing that gives this it, this look, the distressed look that I talk about, is because there's a lot of overlapping of the colors 
within the threads, the three different colors of thread. So when you look at the burgundy bark, you can see that it is darker on the ends. I'm gonna get this partially used thread out of here. It is darker on the ends, but it fades to a paler pink up here. When you move to the geranium, that paler pink is close to what is in the geranium, and then the geranium moves into a lighter cream in the middle. And then the Katie's Blush has also that more saturated pink, and it also moves to the lighter pink and the cream that's in the geranium, but there's more of it in the Katie's Blush than there is in the geranium. And so the way when these colors touch each other, if they're touching each other in the same, you know, where there's that blending, where there, there's that similar color, um, then that's where the blending happens. So if you're going to go out and get some of the over-dyed flosses from the other company, keep that in mind when you're deciding which colors to get. Um, and I, I cannot tell you if there's anything similar at all to the cottage garden threads. So, um, I think that was about it. I wanted to say, um, for the shops that I do know are carrying or are, are getting the floss packs, the, the thread packs from cottage garden threads, black cat stitchery in both the burgundy and the green, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Garon stitchery in both the burgundy and the green the attic in both of the colorways. And um, Fat Quarter Shop has been carrying. I had asked them when I first started to stitch this to go ahead and get the floss in the both colorways. I do not know that they're going to create floss packs for them, but they do have the three colors for both colorways in the store. So um, that is the information I wanted to share with you on palace. Don't fall. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to do, talk a little bit more about was um, my freebie that I shared with you um, on social media, in my newsletter. If you do not subscribe yet to my newsletter, I do invite you to do so. I will be putting the link down below. This is the newsletter coming off my blog where you will find out all of the news and information I have going on, you will be the first to know. So I created this little freebie. Um, hold on. I forgot to get my little board. Just as a thank you after Needlework Expo to tell you how much I love you and appreciate you. This is charted and stitched in the Vicki Clayton silk that I used for Antonio. You can see that here. Um, I like that, that palette so much, I decided to use it again. Not all of the colors are used here, but most of them are. And I don't know whether I showed you this. I think I showed it on social media, on, but I don't think I showed you this on a video. So this is, as I was getting ready to stitch Antonia, I was looking around to try and figure out what would be a good way to store the spools that I was using, because as you know, Vicky's threads do come in spools. So I wanted a, a nice, tidy, whoops, <laughs> but easy to use, <laughs> don't spill them all, um, way to store them. And so I was looking through all the detritus that I have in my, both of my rooms, my work room and my stitchy room, and saw my little eyeglass case. I never use the eyeglass cases that you get whenever you get new glasses. Do you guys? I never do, but I keep them. And I'm glad I did because this little guy is perfect. It is zipper closed and you can see, and I will try not to spill them this time, um, that they fit perfectly. And because the inside is felt, Whenever I have extras, you know, if I've used one strand of the six of the six in the in the length, then I'll just wind it up on my fingers and I just put it on here and it just sticks kind of above where that color of spool is. And then when I'm done stitching for the day, I just uh, and of course it's not, it doesn't want to zip. I just zip it close and stick it in my work bag. These are perfect. Now, if I had a lot more colors, um, I'd need a bigger eyeglass case, 
but um, yeah, for, for Antonia, it worked perfectly. So that's what I used. 40, the, the Vicki Clayton Silks, and this is 40 Count Antique Lace by Seraphim um, Hand Dyed Fabrics. By the way, the fabric in um, Palace of the Winds is 40 Count Old Linen by Seraphim. I have a thing for Seraphim Hand Dyed Fabrics. Um, I wanted to let you know that there is at least one shop who is um, has mentioned they're going to get in touch with Vicki to carry the silks for Antonia, and that is the Attic Needlework in Mesa, Arizona. I am thrilled to share and spread the word of Vicki's silks, so um, I hope she does get those. She had mentioned that she had heard about them, and she was Jean. I'm talking about Jean, the owner. She had mentioned that she had heard about them and was interested in trying them out, so she felt this would be a perfect opportunity. So if you are interested in Antonia, and you would like to stitch with the silks um, and the attic is your go-to place for all things samplers, give them a call. They did, I don't know whether they've gotten my order yet or not. I've been watching where all of my orders have been going from Expo and most places have gotten my orders by now. Um, okay, I think they did the other day. All right, so that is all of the design news. Nina's just like, you're not gonna disturb me or are you going to pet me? She says, oh, you're going to pet me. Yay. Um, now she wants to capture my hand. Okay, so now I'm going to try and reach over to my little ottoman where I have a stack of other stuff and not disturb the kitty and not have everything fall. Hold, please. We're sharing our chair because that's what we do. Alrighty, so once I was done with getting ready for Needlework Expo, I was in a strange place. I was in a place where I didn't really care what I stitched on. I didn't have any burning need to pick up anything. And I really, I absolutely could not remember what I was working on prior to the full speed ahead getting ready for Expo. And that full speed ahead was a month long, basically, a month long process. So once that, that time was over, I was like, I don't know, I should stitch on something, but I don't know what. So I basically just got like the two things on the top of my pile on my on the floor over there. And those two things were one of the Christmas ones that I had started for when at my attempt of Christmas in July. And that is the Mill Hill kit. I got this at the Silver Needle. They have so many Mill Hill kits and they have them all finished as pillows, so soft finishes. They do not use the per perforated paper that comes in the kit. And quite frankly, I don't like stitching on that. And I loved how the pillows look. So I worked on this. And this was my hour a day project for a few days. Yeah, for probably a couple weeks. So you can see I have the tree over here and I have the, the top story of the house minus the windows. So that is this tree and this top story of the house. Now the blank places that you still see in that tree are where um, the beads are gonna go and I won't put the beads on until I'm done stitching it. So that, um, that got put away. Well, it got put away when I started stitching on the model for the exclusive I'm working on with Maria but it also is getting put away because of Sampler September. It will come back out when I do, um, cat. <laughs> it will come back out when I do Christmas in October. As most of you know, I am not a Halloween person. Um, so I'm gonna do Christmas in October. All right, the other one that I picked up that was on the top of my stack was with the needle. So this is the one that I started with Carolyn Seazook Stitch at StitchCon. And I actually started on this little square. I didn't wanna do the vine, the flower pot on the side because I'm not sure if I'm going to do this one or the one that was in the first with the needle design. I like that one better. Um, 
and I may just decide to leave them off totally. I'm gonna see where I am once I'm done with all the stitching. But I worked more on that first square there, and I decided to keep on working on it until I got that square done. This is a 40 count linen. It's by Treehouse Fiber Arts, and I am using all the called four flosses. So that is that first square completed, and I love it. It's almost full coverage, not quite. Um, it's just such a cute little scene. I loved stitching on this. So like I said, this is Treehouse Fiber Arts fabric. Um, the color is Old North Church. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Really, really like it. So this has been put away. I decided once that square was done, and it took me, um, I would say 10 to 12 days. I don't remember exactly, but probably about 10 to 12 days of my stitching in the evening, and my stitching in the evening is usually two to three hours. So after dinner, once the dishes are done and we settle down for the evening, this was my project. Don't bother the kitty. She flicks her ears every time I go over top of her. Once I was finished with um, that square, I pulled Patchwork back out. Patchwork is the design by the um, Dutch, right? Dutch um, designer, Jan Haltman. Jan Haltman has since passed away, but his designs still live on on an Etsy shop called Maldendrad. And this is Patchwork. Now, as he charted it, there's a bunch of different colors just kind of all over the place. I decided I wanted to do it more as a diagonal rainbow type of feel. I will... Um, I will put a link for this in my description box down below the video window. So, working on this, I had started, I had had this stripe started, so I got that finished. And then I jumped over here, I had had this pale, this pale design finished here. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, I jumped down below that and started on, did this pale peach with the kind of rusty color in the center. I am using Mrs. Seda silks for this. I, yes, I did this orange medallion. You know how much I love orange, which is one of the reasons why I am not a Halloween fan. Um, but I did that one. And then I did this little stripe here and started the same matching little stripe over there, and those match the ones up here and up here. Um, so yeah, again, this is getting put away for Sampler September. I do have kind of a, I, I printed out kind of a black and white picture of the front of the chart of the finished design and I kind of loosely colored in where I want my different colors to fall so this gives you an idea of what the piece is going to look like finished I am not actually keeping totally to where I have the colors colored in um, but it does give me a general idea of where I want to change to the or the yellow where I'm going to be changing to the green um, so yeah, I was thrilled to get this back out. I hope to continue to touch this consistently until I get it done. I can't say when that will be. I don't have any goals because um, with model stitching so much, there's just so many times when things have to get put away um, so I can concentrate on model stitching. But I, I would love to get this done in 2023. So that is my goal. I am keeping notes of what all of Mrs. Sadis' colors I've used um, so that if you want to copy this at all, um, you, can, you can see at least the colors I used, if not the exact placement of everything. But I love Mrs. Sadis silks. The fabric is just plain antique white um, linen 36 count from Zweigert. That's not anything real fancy but the colors just absolutely pop. 
So patchwork, however, is once again getting put away um, for Sampler September. Now I say I want to keep touching that, but again, for Sampler September, I have a whole stack of other things. So um, like during October, during Christmas and October, I will probably still pull that out and um, get some concentrated time on that as well. All right, speaking, oh, one thing that I also worked on before I go into the Sampler September stuff, and that is knitting. I haven't done a whole lot, but I did show you the yarn from my friend Kat and the pattern, the Potter Poncho. Um, so every once in a while, I do get that out and put a few rows in on this. It's not hard to pick up and put down. In fact, it's quite an easy pattern once you get a sense of it. These two stockinette blocks that you can see in here is where pockets are going to go. So this is the front of the poncho. So I will probably get some stitching or some knitting done on that. Probably not today, but maybe tomorrow. My father-in-law is actually coming to visit. He is driving up here from Phoenix, from the Phoenix area. He is taking it in little chunks, which we are thrilled about. So he, the first day he drove to Flagstaff. I think that was his first stop, Flagstaff. And, the, oh no, Cameron. He wanted to stop at the Cameron Trading Post. Um, so that's just north of Flagstaff, maybe an hour, 45 minutes. Um, second stop was St. George, actually outside of St. George. Tonight's stop is in either Provo or Ogden. I had Provo in my mind. Mike had Ogden in his mind, but just another little jaunt further up 15. And then, so he will get here tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we're hoping to, uh, Mike has Monday off, of course, because it is Labor Day. Did I say happy Labor Day to all my friends here in the U.S.? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, so Mike has Monday off and then he also has Friday off. It's his normal every other Friday off. So we're hoping to go over to the Tetons one of those days um, and, you know, take him over there. But anyways, I don't know how long he's staying. He's um, welcome to stay until he feels like heading back down the road, basically. So, um, yeah, I hope to get some knitting done. I started to say that because I hope to get some knitting done on the drive over to the Tetons and back. All right. Sampler September. I love these. I hope to get one done. The rest of them I will just be happy to touch. So the one I hope to get done is Black Sheep Sampler by Wendy from the Heart Needle Arts. So I had started this, I don't remember when, sometime this year. And um, I'm about, mm, I'd say I'm about two thirds done with it. So, try to get this so you can see it. This is an antique reproduction. So this counts for sap Sampler September Soiree. For those who may not know, Sampler September is kind of broken up into two different categories. Sampler September, plain Sampler September, is um, samplers that are not antique reproductions. And Sampler September Soiree are those that are antique reproductions. So this is an antique reproduction. This is stitched on 36 count or 40 count, I can't remember, um, gray by Weeks Dye Works fabric. And I have converted the called for threads, which I think are Gloriana. She usually charts in Gloriana, although she also provides over dyed floss and DMC conversions in her charts. Um, but I converted this to Vicki Clayton silks. So as you can see, there's some specialty stitches. I don't know whether you can see those. Um, the white bands, this is a, a herringbone. This is an eyelet. Um, there's some st satin stitches in this row. So there are some, some specialty stitches in here. And um, I don't believe I have shared this conversion on my website. So if you are interested, let me know and I can put that there. But um, yeah, this is a sweet little sample sampler. I am working on this an hour a day. Actually, 
Last night, I decided to go ahead and just keep working on it the rest of the evening because I was working on this eyelet band and I really just wanted to get that done and get it off my plate. Last night, I finished the rest of this alphabet and the eyelet band and got a couple more letters done on the blue alphabet. So that I hope to get done this month. And again, from here on out, I'll be working on that an hour a day. So little chunks making progress. All right, Nina, where should I put this stuff? Just don't bug me, she says. Oh, poor baby girl. Poor baby girl. All right. I have three other ones. No, one, two, three, four other ones that um, I plan to... Th these will be my evening stitches. Now, let me caveat this by saying that as long as I get enough stitching done on my model stitches during the day, I am allowed to stitch on these in the evening. But if I feel like I need to get more done on the model stitching, um, then these will be sacrificed. But two new starts, two whips. This is another antique reproduction. You can see it's a Spanish colonial. This is Luz Gonzalez. And this is an amazing, this is, this is so my style of sampler. I am not into the traditional samplers. I am into this style. So you can see that there's Bargello, Florentine stitch, um, lots of cross stitch, but lots of, lots of gorgeous Bargello. So, um, this calls for a Vera Swa, and that is what I'm using. I believe I kitted this at the attic, the, the, um, yeah, I did. The designer is Samplers Remembered. So this does come from the attic. I, I have it on my scroll frame, so I can't really show you totally um, everything that's done, but there's not very much that's hidden over here. I do have, I think, the words done the whole way across. But you can see I have, this was a um, satin stitch. This is Bargello. You can see I'm working on this rose here. So let me show you the pattern again and show you what that means. Hold on. Black Sheep Sampler was trying to make a getaway. All right, so I have, I think, all of the words done across the top. I have this section done in here. I have this section done here. I have this Bargello done here. And then I'm just starting on this clump of roses. So yeah, I have a long way to go. If I could get, my plan is, like I said, to work on one of these each week. I was gonna say, if I could get that, that bunch of roses done, I would be thrilled, but I think that's probably um, expecting a bit much because that's a lot of stitching. This is 40 count. Um, I think it's a lakeside linen, but I don't remember which color it is. I don't think it's the called for, but I don't remember. So that is the first one. One of my new starts is Mrs. Campbell, 1805, from Hands Across the Sea. And this is another reproduction. Again, the attic kitted this up for me. And I am stitching this. I haven't started it. I am stitching this on 56 count wood smoke with the called for Avera Swa 100.3 silks. I've got to figure out a good way to store these silks, probably in one of those sewing boxes that you store spools on. Um, but yeah, you can see I haven't quite gotten there yet. But kitted up by the attic, ready to go. New start, sampler, September soiree. Another new start. This will be at the end of the month. Regina Heibel by Brenda Gervais. I fell in love with this as soon as she released it last market. Amazing. I got the called for um, fabric from 
country sampler when we were when we stopped there on our way back excuse me on our way back from stitch con i do not have the threads yet i decided i wanted to use vicky clayton's um conversion for this it is charted in dmc so that is really unusual for an antique sampler i think that's awesome but I want to use the silks on this, so I have ordered those, and they are on their way to me. But this will be a new start later in the month. And then last but not least is the Smith Sampler by the Scarlet House. I believe this was a Stitch Mania start a couple of years ago. <laughs> Or maybe it was a, a, a sampler September start a couple years ago. I don't remember. But oh, let me show you. I know I saw this at um, the stop that was in San, the shop that was in San Antonio, Stitches from the Heart. And I got it there and kitted it up from there. So that would have been um, last year sometime. So the Smith Sampler by the Scarlet House. And you can see she actually used Lakeside Linen's Vintage Meadow Rue. The shop had done the sample in, um, I believe this is cocoa. I can never remember whether it's cocoa or straw. Um, and it was gorgeous. So rich um, that I had to do that too. So um, you can see that's where I am. The My goal is to get the swan motif filled in when I'm working on it this week. So, or not this week, but whatever week I work on it. So that's that swan there in the middle. So it is a full coverage piece. Um, so yeah, I hope to get that done. I have a good chunk of it done. So we shall see. I am using, this is 40 count linen. Um, Although when I look at it, it looks smaller, like it might be 46. It's either 46 or 40. And I am using most of the called for threads. I think there was one that they did not have in stock. And so I found something fairly similar. So that is that one. So that are those are all my charts for sampler September. All right, I think now I'm going to have to get up and move my haul over so I can reach it without letting the kitty take my seat. And then we'll do haul and giveaway. So hold on. Okay. She's squeaking at me. <laughs> okay, so haul, I don't have a ton. But you know, it has been, it has been a couple of months. Has it really been a couple of months since I've done a full video, a full floss tube? It must be looking at what's in front of me. And if I have already shown you these, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> it's been a long time. Anyways, the reason why I'm saying it's been a couple of months is because I have two sets of the um, monthly variegated floss from Vicki Clayton. And I have two sets of the NPI floss from the Fine Floss Club from um, Fat Quarter Shop. So it's obviously been that long, right? All right, so I'm not gonna go through all of these, needless to say, Vicki Clayton silks, adding to my collection is never a bad thing. And there's actually another set on its way to me. We can't be going on three months since I've done a video. <laughs> That's impossible, but anyways, so there's those. Again, if it's at all possible for you, I can't recommend her silks enough. And then adding to my collection of NPI silks, we have mint, mint green and marigold yellow sets of NPI floss. Super pretty, I love that mint green. Okay, I also got from Fat Quarter Shop the next set of their um, Just Pins Club. So this one is red, white, and sand. Oh, it's a whale, it's a she seashell, and a starfish. How fun are those? Now, I believe this has to be the last, the last of the just, um, of the pin club pins because they are transitioning over to, um, 
They are transitioning over to desserts, I think. So cupcakes and that kind of stuff, pins. So, um, yeah, I was kind of surprised to get this one, but I think this is probably the last one. All right, I am also on auto ship for the um, A Year in the Woods series from Cottage Garden, Garden Sampling. I'm on auto ship from um, Acorns and Threads in Portland. So we have two of those that have come, the Barn Owl and the Woodpecker. I have not worked any more on the Fox, which is the only one I started. <laughs> Adding to my collection. I also had to order, um, I think I had to order another skein of floss from another skein of NPI from Fat Quarter Shop for some reason. And I certainly wasn't going to let that one skein of floss travel alone. So I finally got, and this is from Market, Rosewood Manor's release at Market last year, um, or actually this year in March, that I loved as soon as I saw it, but it was sold out every time I tried to get it in every store I was in. Um, so, yeah, Fat Quarter Shop finally had it in stock. Let me see what I had to order. Oh, I had to order more. Um, I was afraid I was going to run out for stitching up the um, Samplings of Lace Autumn pillows for my new release. So I ordered some replacement skeins of those, and I got this along with it. So I don't know when I'm going to start it. It is just such a stunning piece, but it is a huge piece. So, Fat Quarter Shop also sent me Lori Holt's Next Planner for 2023. And I've decided, I gave away the one they sent me last year. I decided I'm going to keep this one um, I haven't done stickers in my planner since June, probably, <laughs> maybe early July. But I'm going to use this for that instead of getting one from Happy Planner, just because I have it in front of me. I have it here. Um, I have a ton of stickers that will work, so why not? Um, so yeah, that is the 2023 Lori Holt Planner. Um, so they are, I believe they're already available in the Fat Quarter Shop if you want one. And I will link these below as well. Last but not least, well, this isn't last actually, um, but definitely not least. Yesterday, I got from Evertote, Leo and, Flo Leo and Roxy, Quaint Rose Needleworks, um, Needle Arts, the kit that Caroline and team put together for this pattern, Quaint Rose Needle Arts pattern. It is gorgeous. Look at that pattern. Isn't that stunning? So it's the project bag, the pattern, the Leo and Roxy floss for it. The only thing, and a little, a little um, tools bag. The only thing that I didn't get was linen, um, the Leo and Roxy linen, because I have plenty of linen. I don't, I don't need, <laughs> I didn't need to get linen. I'm gonna put that away. So I do not know, I did not look to see if she still has any of these left, but I, this was ordered back in, not too long ago, I think she advertised it maybe a month ago, and I jumped on it, because that is just a stunning pattern, so. If you got one too, yay, go us. Gorgeous, gorgeous material. Look at that fabric. Carolyn does, Caroline does a gorgeous job. Gorgeous. All right, now we are on to last but not least. And that is also including talking about giveaways. So, Teresa, and Teresa, I don't want to screw up your last name. Quono, Quono, um... Teresa is Jersey Girl Stitches on Instagram, and her company is Jer Jersey Girl Stitch Company. And what does she make, you ask? Well, let me show you. She makes absolutely stunning counting pins. Look at those. 
So she made these to coordinate with my samplings of lace smalls. And guess what, guys? Here, she also included, this isn't part of the guess what, I just unburied this. She also included some Christmas pins. I will be linking her website below as well, of course. But she all she included a set of these for me and a set of these for you. So, like I said, this links into the giveaway. The giveaways in celebration of Needlework Expo and how successful it was, I am giving away some of my patterns, both paper and PDFs. So right up front, let me say, paper is for those located in the US. US addresses are eligible for the paper. International addresses are eligible for the PDFs. So make sure when you comment that, um, that you let me know whether you're international or US. Okay, so what's happening here? I have, and, and the pins, I'm sorry my international friends, the pins are only going to local to US addresses. So one of the giveaways is the Samplings of Lace Summer with the pin set. And you know, I didn't think about any, um, any fun question for these. So just tell me in the comments, Samplings of Lace Summer um, US. Samplings of Lace Summer International. Just We're just gonna make it totally straightforward. Samplings of Lace Summer. Samplings of Lace Autumn. So where did Autumn go? So this is US Samplings of Lace. And then Samplings of Lace PDF International. Samplings, and that's Summer. Samplings of Lace Autumn, paper pattern, pin set. Sam say, say, I would like to win, or just, you can just list them. You don't have to say, I would like to win. It's gonna be obvious, right? Especially since we're not supposed to use win and giveaway and all that in our, in our comments. So, Samplings of Lace Autumn, US. If you are international and like, would like this, say Samplings of Lace Autumn International. I also have and Antonia Rossi, Rossell Garcia, 1886. Don't have any cute pin sets to go with it, but again, Antonia, you can just say Antonia, in fact. Antonia US, Antonia International. Carolyn's Balloons. Carolyn's Balloons US, Carolyn's Balloons International. Now, I do not have, I did not get any um, printouts yet of um, Palace of the Winds, but that is going to be included. So, Palace of the Winds U.S., pa in fact, you can just say Palace, Palace U.S., Palace International. I will be ordering copies of that in the not-too-distant future because I um, I will have my patterns at Stitch West to, to sell. I hope we're allowed to say that. I don't know whether they were planning on keeping the vendors a surprise. Oh well, too late now. <laughs> I'm going to be vending at Stitch West. I will have my patterns there. Um, so I will be ordering paper copies of Palace. Um, so I will have one to give away. So just remember to distinguish whether you, you, you're U.S. or international shipping. All right. Um, I am, let's see, I have one last question for you. I'm going forward with, um, hoping to get into Nashville in March. I have put my name on the wait list, so, um, we shall see. That seems like the next logical step after having a good, um, Needlework Expo, the virtual show, so we shall see. So, a lot of my brain is working out and I need to actually make lists of what I hope to have ready in time for Nashville, as well as releasing other patterns every month. But what I want to ask is your opinion of how patterns are packaged. Now, most of my patterns, my physical patterns, are packaged in the plastic bags. I do have some that are stapled booklets, not in a bag. Do you have a preference? I would like to know. And also, 
do you have a preference for whether, if it's a smaller pattern, whether it's printed half size or the full eight and a half by 11? Does that, is that something that you look at and think, oh, I wish they would have made that half size. It's just a little pattern. Is that something you think about? But main thing is in bags or just as a stapled booklet, do you have a preference? Is there one that you like better? Inquiring minds wanna know. Okay, I think that is it for today, except our angel card. So our angel card says, stay humble. Know within that you are amazing. Let the world find out by your actions without you saying a word. Great advice. And as I read that, I was thinking, you know, that's a great advice for me as I'm moving out into the mainstream of the designer world. And I get an awful lot of kudos and an awful lot of compliments from all of you guys. And of course, I love it. You know, who wouldn't? But I also am very aware that I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. If you didn't like my patterns, if you weren't buying them, if you weren't encouraging me, and if you weren't telling your shops to buy them, I wouldn't be here. And it's the same with this floss tube channel. If you weren't watching me, I wouldn't be continuing to do this. So I think it's easy to stay humble <laughs> because it's, for me, it's all about you. So, once again, thank you. Once again, know that I am grateful for you. You tickle my fancy. You tickle my funny bone. You make me cry. You make me laugh. And I wouldn't be here without you. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. For those of you that are in the U.S. celebrating Labor Day, have a wonderful Labor Day if you have anything fun planned. Like I said, my father-in-law is coming, so we've been kind of getting the house sorted for a guest. Um... But we hope to get out and about here in the, sometime this week, so I might have some, extra, some other pictures to show you. It's been a while. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you. You take care of yourselves, and I will talk to you soon.